Good morning. Let's start with positive energy. So I'll start with a question. All of you have been talking about AI, right? He talked about AI in sales. Can you tell me the year in which AI was invented? 70 something? The answer is 1956. But all of us know only ChatGPT in 2000, 20 plus, which is less than three years. So the power of AI, every one of us knows. But what we don't know is while AI is doing great job of doing human tasks, but you know the negative aspect of AI is what I'm going to focus on because of my personal ambition, which is to translate my PhD in artificial intelligence into a tangible startup with multiple aims. First aim of mine was I should do something which is useful for mankind. Second thing, I want to do something which can utilize my deep technology expertise in AI. And third is I want to build something for the world from India deep tech. And you know what? In the recent startup Mahakum, which was held in Delhi, our honorable minister, Piyush Goelji, commented that India is getting known for 10 minute delivery grocery startups. Where are the deep technology? But I want to contradict it by building a deep tech AI startup for the world from India. And what gives me the confidence? I have been 32 years in AI, B-Tech, M-Tech, PhD, and then heading a large research group in a large SI. But then that did not stop there. I wanted to do something bigger with all these three ambitions. So what did I do? I started an AI startup couple of years back. But then when I was talking about what is that problem which, you know, can handle all of this. Then I started asking the question, what are people concerned about in AI? Jobs, right? So AI is going to take away all our jobs. That is partly true. But you know, the way I would like to look at it is AI is going to replace the people who don't know AI with people who know AI is not going to be replacing humans and I will tell you where and that is the focus of my startup. So when I started to look at what is the problem I should solve, then I started researching on, okay, AI is all great. We see all kinds of automation, but where is the silver lining where I see opportunity? Let me tell you, I'll start off with a job description, which is now the hottest job. You know what is the job? It is called Vibe Code Cleanup Specialist. What is Vibe Coding? Vibe Coding is where programmers in the software industry are just using AI tools to generate software code. No need for software developers. But you know what the result? It results in clumsy code, which is not performing to the expectations of the client. So what we now have a new job description of software developers who can understand this vibe coding, this so-called AI generated coding, debug it, make it work and test it well. So two jobs are created, AI testing. And second thing is this whole vibe code cleanup specialists. So is AI a danger anymore? No, it's creating new jobs. Think about it. But that's the angle which I'm working on. Primarily my focus is on, as I said, at the intersection of human values imbibed with AI and in order for that, what is the kind of job I need to work on? That is where I call AI testing and why I say testing is important. You know, AI has been known for last 50 years in three generations. First generation took 40 years rule-based systems. Second generation took deep learning based automated cars, driverless cars, automated medical diagnosis. And third generation is the generative AI, chat GPT, etc. But believe me, I'll give you instances. There have been instances where driverless car has gone and taken lives of people. There's been instances where chat GPT has created legal cases, precedents, which the judge later found out were all fabricated, which is not real. So do you want to base your law profession based on this kind of an 
so called you know unreliable ai and lastly i want to say in the modern avatar of agentic ai which is what they say that an agent will replace a human by doing all the steps autonomously you know what recently happened a particular agent instead of carrying out the instructions related to database instructions it went and wiped out the entire database and this my friends is the state of ai which is untested and why is this untested behavior manifesting in negative ramifications of ai because people are in a rush to deploy ai you know ai in the three generations have taken different number of years to reach mankind first generation of rule based ai took 45 years second generation of deep learning took 10 years but the generative ai generation is so much in a hurry that it's less than 11 months it has reached the whole world so in that rush people are deploying untested ai onto the world so what is the solution the solution is don't rush but bring a testing mindset to ai so that you can have a face of ai which is known as responsible ai ai which will behave responsibly and that is where the notion of what i call as responsible ai which is creating a new set of jobs which is all about two principles with great power comes great responsibility who said that spider man and the second one is very popular in the security industry is called trust but verify so that what is the mantra here the mantra is ai will give you some fact ai will give you some output but do you believe it just that has come from a chat gpt believe me 30% of chat gpt answers are hallucinations they are fraud they are fake so better go and verify with five different engines verify and cross validate so when i say responsible ai what does it mean what do you mean by testing ai for responsible behavior and that's where it's not very different from what we seek as responsible in behavior from a human being first and foremost it is about bringing transparency we always talk about complex ai algorithms and give our task to ai and let it do but do you know if you have a complex ai you no know, algorithm we don't know the detail of it it's a black box would you let it go and operate on your heart without knowledge of what is internal and that is where the first issue comes up which is called transparency we should have a mechanism for transparency of ai the second one which is very important let's say i have chat gpt i have questions for ladies out there i say the nurse took the day off because she was not feeling well that is completed by chat gpt the doctor was not feeling well so he went home the second part is filled up by chat gpt do you like that doctor he nurse she is that acceptable no from basic human acceptance the generative ai is today ultimately biased against minorities against minor genders against the lesser population among the overall digital divide which is what we call it so what do you need you need to test ai systems whether they are biased and then make sure that you do the intervention to remove the bias the third aspect you know just because you are using ai would you go and ask it to take all your shopping behavior data and train itself without your permission no that's where privacy comes in so you need to have data mining or ai with privacy in mind and then the last but not the least is security you know what happens today the ai models are so dumb in terms of security that you know there are ways by which the iphone security can be tricked with a simple mask there are simple stop sign can be fooled by putting a small sticker on it and treating it as if it's not a stop sign imagine the accidents it caused so you need to look at security aspects of ai also as a major part of it so given that what is the message the message is there is a silver lining in ai may namely in terms of the opportunities which are opening up because of the need for assuring quality by testing of ai applications that's what i think is a very remarkable career opportunity for every one of us then coming to my own personal growth in this domain it's not a hunky dory story i was a researcher phd in ai i am trying to do here a deep tech startup so what are the challenges so courage to begin starts from 
finding out opportunities to overcome the challenges. What are the challenges? First and foremost, AI startup means you need skilled people who understand in depth AI algorithms. So what do I do? I don't go and just give high salaries. I'm a startup. So what I do is I partner with academic institutions, get their students to come and intern with us. So that's a smart way by which amazingly complex algorithms have been created by brains across India for my startup. Second thing, compute resources, very costly. AI resources are very costly. But that's where I'm very happy about many of the programs offered by big accelerators like Azure or AWS, which offer free credits to startups to experiment. So that's what I've been writing on. I've been, we left and right go and apply to all kinds of accelerators and get credits so that we can get GPUs on which we can train our algorithms. And lastly, but not the least, a lot of times, if you restrict yourself to India as a deep tech client base, it's not ready. So does it stop me? It doesn't. So what I do is I've offered pilots and gone with partners like Infosys across the globe. And I'm trying now with global customers so that they can give feedback to how my product will look and how my product will fare. And my goal is not to generate a simple, successful, scalable startup, but with two additional criteria I told you, right? A deep tech for the world from India using Indian talent. And in the process, one more thing which I'm doing is I want to mitigate the notion that instead of taking away jobs, AI is creating these new jobs, which are about maintaining and testing of AI solutions. And that is where I think the future is. And lo and behold, I did this five years back. And then what I did is, first I said I should educate the testing community on how to test. Runaway success. My training program is accepted by international standards body. I train more, we are, our body has trained more than 4,000 testers across the globe. Eight international languages got translated. Then I went on to have the courage to make a product out of it. That's what I'm working on. So it's not like I've taken a very big jump They're directly taking a product. Started with training, then started to do actual solutions for customers, and then started to build a product. So it's not like it's a discrete jump, but it's a gradual gradation from a training to a services to a product. And I have very high hopes because of the validation I got. Recently, we got in Startup Mahakun the gold winner, which I think is a great validation of the fact that you know we were in line with. Minister Piyush Goyal's mandate that we should build deep tech startups out of India. Second thing is I'm going against the tide of AI reducing jobs, but I'm trying to create jobs for AI by creating testers for AI. And then last but not the least, my own personal ambition, instead of just sitting in a corporate research, doing armchair research based on my AI PhD, or sitting in an academic just doing as a faculty, producing tons and tons of papers, I am producing something based on research taken to market with potential of producing what I believe the next Google out of India. So wish me luck and I hope I will be successful in this journey. Thank you. And with this, I sign off. And my only request to all of you, please don't believe the first answer coming from an AI engine. As I said, verify from 10 different engines and then go and believe it. So with that mantra, I'll take leave of you and hope it was a useful talk. Thank you.